going to take double jeopardy. Okay, now, number one, you want to compute the total gain or loss. All right, on the transaction. Now, whether the transaction has commercial substance or not, you still have to compute the gain or loss. Now, to compute the gain or loss, this is what you do, all right? You take the difference between the fair value of the asset given up All right, and the book value of the asset given up. Okay, all right, so first thing you're gonna do is compute the total gain or loss on the transaction. Whether it has commercial substance or not, all right, compute the gain. Uh, you never think that we only have three or four people in here. It sounds like the world's coming to an end. All right. So compute the total gain or loss on the transaction, whether it has commercial substance or not. And then the gain is calculated by taking the difference between the fair market value of the asset given up and the book value of the asset given up. All right. And by the way, if you don't know the fair market value of the asset given up, you can use all right, the fair market value of the asset received. All right, so they don't, if they don't give you the fair market value of the asset received, all right, I'm sorry, the fair market value of the asset given up, you can use the fair market value of the asset received. All right, now, here we go. Now, if there is a gain from step one, all right, what happens is this. A says, if it has commercial substance, if it has commercial substance, all right, what you're going to do is you're going to recognize the total gain. Recognize total gain. All right, so if it has commercial substance, the exchange has commercial substance, recognize the entire gain. All right, now, if it lacks commercial substance, Then this is what you're going to do. Now, there's a sub point here, A, all right? If it lacks commercial substance and there's no cash involved in the transaction, all right? If there's no cash involved, then no gain is recognized. All right, now, also, if some cash is involved, which means if some cash is paid, all right, if some cash is paid in the transaction, also, no gain is recognized. But remember this, if the calculation of the gain or loss results in a loss, you do record the loss immediately. Losses are always recorded, whether they have commercial substance or not. All right, now, the last thing, all right, is this. If you receive some cash, or they'll say some boot received, all right, and you'll take the following formula, all right? If some boot is received, I'm gonna go over here. If some boot is received, you're gonna take the cash received over the cash received plus any fair market value of other assets received. 
Okay? All right. The cash received, if you receive any cash, take the cash received over the gain received plus the fair market value of the other assets. All right? This is a proration. All right? You multiply this by, all right, the total gain. And this will be the gain recognized. All right. Now, let's stop here and let's go to the book a second. I want you to go to the book. All right. And Sonny, all right, keep the board behind me on the screen. Okay. All right. Now, I want you to go to page 2D is in dog 18. All right. Scenario number two. Now, don't worry about scenario number one. They're not going to ask it. All right. Here's the information. We have a non-monetary exchange on the top of the page that has commercial substance and a gain is recorded. Now, what happens if the transaction has commercial substance? All right. If the exchange has commercial substance, you're going to recognize the what? The total Thank gain. You. All right. See that? All right. Now, let's look at the facts here. All right, we have facts on the asset given up. The historical cost is 72. The accumulated depreciation is 26,000. And the fair value of the asset given up is 55,000. Information on the asset received. The fair value of the asset received is not known. All right, cash or boot paid is 13,000. All right, now they want you to calculate the cost of the asset received and also the gain on disposal. All right, now let's look at this. Let's get the gain first. All right, to calculate the gain, we take the what? All right, we take the fair market value of the asset given up. All right, how much is the fair market value of the asset given up? Hey, Phil. Yes. Can, hold for a second. Teresa, are you there? Hello, can you hear me? I can hear you, Teresa. Yes, I had to do it on my cell, on my mobile phone. So oh. I finally decided to okay. stand in the computer. Thank you. Well, thank you, everyone, for coming today. The class is over. No, <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's the story of my life. But sorry about no, that. Thank no, you no, for no. sticking with All that. Right. So once again, the first step is to do what? Compute the what? Gain or loss. All right. How do you do that? You take the fair market value of the asset given up. All right. How much is the fair market value of the asset given up? 55. I don't hear anybody. How much? 55. 55. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, mm -hmm. what is the book value of the asset given up? Uh, All right. Book value is the original cost uh, minus uh, the depreciation uh, taken, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So what's the book value? 46,000. All right. 46,000. You get that by taking the historical cost of 72 mm -hmm. minus the accumulated depreciation of 26. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there's a gain on disposal of $9,000. Now, notice. Does this transaction have commercial substance? Yes. By getting this asset, it'll increase your cash flows. And when it has commercial substance, all the gain is recognized. Yeah? So we're going to recognize a gain of $9,000. All right. Now, let's look at the journal entry. All right. First of all, all right, the asset received is going to be your plug figure, by the way. All right. So we debit accumulated depreciation. For the accumulated depreciation of the asset given up, all right, we credit the asset cost of given up, 72, all right, we have a gain on disposal of nine, all right, now, if you look at the information, it said here that, all right, information on the asset received is this, uh, cash boot was paid, all right, cash boot was paid, so they credit cash, 13,000, and then the plug figure is 68,000, all right, for the asset received. Now, let me show you another way of getting the asset received. Now, I don't know if you remember tax-free exchanges in taxes, all right? The new asset was equal to, now this is taxation. Do you remember that the new asset was equal to the old basis plus the gain recognized minus the boot received? Does anybody remember that? Mm -hmm. All right, now, how do you know if something increases basis or decreases? All right, well, you start off with your old basis. Why? Because your new asset has the same basis as the old set asset because you just want exchanging that asset, all right? And they don't look at it as 
They look at it as exchanging personal property for personal property, all right, real property for real property. So if I exchange a piece of personal property, which has a basis to me of so amount, the new asset is going to have that same basis, all right? All right, so new asset, to get the value, it's the old basis of the asset surrendered, all right? This is taxes, plus gain recognized, all right? Minus boot received. Now, you also can have boot paid. How do you know if you add boot paid to the calculation or subtract boot received? Well, boot paid, paid begins with the letter P as in Peter, right? All right, so P means you're gonna plus it. So when you see boot paid, think of P plus add it to the basis. All right, if there's boot received, what is the letter that received actually begins with? All right, this is D. sesame. R. R. R means a reduction of basis. You see that? So you'll subtract any boot received from the basis. Now, how does that relate to accounting? All right. Well, this is how we're going to do it. The new basis is not going to be equal to the old basis. All right. The old basis in accounting is the book value of the old asset. All right. Now, you're going to do this. You're going to add any gain recognized. Remember, gain on a transaction increases the basis. Now, why does it increase the basis? Because, all right, by increasing the basis of the asset, all right, when you sell that asset at a gain, you're not recognizing a gain twice. You see that? All right, the gain steps up the basis of that asset. Well, anytime you step up a basis, you're going to reduce any future gains or increasing any future losses. All right? All right. And then we're going to subtract any uh, boot received. And what we'll do is, all right, we'll add any boot paid. All right. Now, let's see if we can get the new asset. All right. How much is the book value of the old asset? Anybody? The book value? Yeah, how much is the book value of the old asset surrendered? In this example, scenario two, what is it? It's um, 46. 46, all right. Mm -hmm. I don't know, all right, let's go over here. Do the calculation over here. All right, so we got the book value of the old is 46,000. Mm -hmm. All right, now, mm -hmm. do we have any gain recognized in this transaction? Yes or no? Yes. How much is the gain recognized? 9,000. 9,000. What do we do with the 9,000? Add it or subtract it to the book value. Steps up the basis. Add. Right? Add. 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 Yeah. Excellent. All right. Now, do we have any boot received in this transaction? The answer is no. What? No. There's boot what? Boot paid. You see that? All right. So boot paid does what to the book value? What does it do? Reduces. Increases. It increases. increases. If you pay cash <laughs> right. for something, yeah. Yeah. all right, yeah. that's what it costs. That increases the cost of the item. All right. So we have your boot paid of how much? They give it to you. Mm. How much is the boot paid? 13,000. 13,000. All right. So we have here 46 plus 9 plus 13. That should be the price of the new, well, the value of the new asset. All right. How much is 46, 9, and 13? All right. 46 plus 9 is what? 55? 68. 68. 58. 58. All right. 56. All right. What is it? Six eight. Six eight. Sixty eight. Good. Do we have any other answers? <laughs> All right. Sixty eight. Well, let's see what happens here. Let's look at the journal entry. All right. For the sale. All right. Now, we debit asset received sixty eight thousand. So therefore, that's the value of the asset received. Does it agree with this? Yes. All right. We get rid of the accumulated depreciation of the old asset we're giving up. We get rid of the cost of the asset given up. We record the gain on disposal, which is nine, and we credit cash 13. All right, does everyone see that? 
Mm -hmm. So remember, when a transaction has commercial substance, you recognize the entire game, all right? Because it's increasing your cash flow by obtaining this new asset, all right? Any questions on that? Was that hard? All right, by the way, is anybody out there? Is no this question. hard? Was this hard? No, no, that was not hard. No, it's simple, right? All right, by the way, if you know how to do something, nothing is hard, all right? Now, let's look at scenario number three on page 2D18. 2D18. Sonny? Back. You want... Yes. By the way, if you have a PowerPoint presentation, Sonny is available to come over and do it for you. Right, Sonny? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. And you can if you're in a warmer climate. If you're in a warmer climate, and just look for his ad on CNN tonight. All right. It's Sunny PowerPoint presentation. All right. And by the way, it's LLC at the end. All right. So anyway, here's scenario number three. We have an exchange that has non-monetary exchange. It lacks commercial substance and boot is paid. All right. So if it lacks commercial substance, all right, what do we have here? Let's look here. It's letter B here. All right. If it lacks commercial substance and there's no cash involved, no gains, no gains recognized. recognized. Right. If it if it lacks commercial substance and some cash is paid, no gain is recognized. No gains recognized. All right. But if it lacks commercial substance and some boot is received, all right, what you have to do is calculate the gain and then do this proration to the amount of the gain to be recognized. All right. The proration is the cash received or the boot received over the cash or boot received plus the fair market value of other assets, all right? This will give you the amount of the gain that will be recognized for this transaction where it lacks commercial substance, all right? And some cash is received, okay? All right, now let's look at the facts here, all right? Information on the asset given up, all right? Historical cost is 72,000. Accumulated depreciation is 26. Fair value is 5,000, 55,000, I'm sorry. Information on the asset received, the fair market value of the asset received is not known, all right? So if it's not known, what do you do, all right? What do you use to calculate the gain? If you don't know the fair market value of the asset received, then you use the fair market value of the asset what? Given, Given up. up. Given up, good, all right? The cash paid is 13,000. The first thing says, all right, the cost of the asset received in the calculation is as follows. All right, now let's see here. How do you get the cost of the asset received? What do you start off with? Mm. There's a formula. On the, do you see a formula on the left? All right, yeah, Actually, formula, yeah. you, you can't see it. All right, see that? Book value of the old asset plus gain recognized minus boot received, or if you have to pay boot paid, you increase it. That's how you get the value of the new asset, all right? So therefore, I will go back to this and I will ask you, all right? Let's get the value of the new asset received, all right? What is, let's calculate, well, actually what they do is they calculate the gain or loss first, all right? Here it is, step one. I told you to do that first and I'm going someplace else, all right? First thing, what are you gonna do to calculate a non-monetary exchange? All right, that lacks commercial substance or doesn't. All right, what's the first thing you want to do? Calculate the what? Gain. 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 Now, loss. if you calculate a loss, what do you do with the loss? Whether it has commercial substance or not, what do you do with the loss? Add it back. Record it. Add Record it. it immediately, right? All right. If it's a loss, whether it lacks or doesn't lack commercial substance, all the loss is recorded immediately. All right. That's based on what theory in accounting? Conservatism. I'm sorry? Conservatism. Conservatism, correct. Do you know we're very conservative people, <laughs> all right? Now, I'm not doing conservatism by wearing a yellow shirt. <laughs> I should be wearing a dark shirt, do you agree? In fact, I should be wearing a three-piece suit and carrying around- And a white shirt. Orders. What? And a white shirt. And a white shirt, exactly, all right? Thank you very much. Uh, I was going to go later to my uh, clothier, all right? Uh, uh, 
Can't remember and a stethoscope name. because you're a doctor, Phil. Oh, I am a doctor, right. And by the way, I, I'm, thank you for saying that, Sonny. All right. Yes, I am a doctor. And last week, I was the first doctor that did a virtual colonoscopy. Hmm, that's not funny. All right. Now. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what a colonoscopy is, everyone? Yes. 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 All right. That's the opposite of a, uh, a test to see if you have a sore throat. <laughs> All right. Now. I did that. I did that. All right. By the way, the problem was there was a little technical glitch on that. All right. And something happened. It got stuck in the middle of the procedure. All right. So anyway, I'll write up an article on that. And by the way, I did not do a virtual colonoscopy. All right. I don't want you to think that. All right. So here we go. We're going to get the new asset, right? Is that what we do first? Get the asset? Yes or no? What's the first thing we do? All right, with a transaction, whether a last compute. commercial substance or not, what do we do? Compute the gain and loss. Compute, compute gain. the gain or loss, right? All right, so how do we get the gain or loss? All right, we take the fair market value of the asset given up. Do we have the fair market value of the asset given up? Yes. No. No? Yes. yes. We yes. certainly do. It's how much? 55,000. 55,000. Mm -hmm. All right, now. All right, let's get the book value of the asset given up. What's the book value? 46,000. 46,000. So if you go down there, all right, you will have a what? A gain of gain. $9,000, right? All right, now, because the transaction lacks commercial substance, the $9,000 gain will be deferred, all right, and reduce the basis of the asset received. All right, well, let's just continue here. All right, now the next thing, let's get the cost of the asset received. All right, the cost of the asset received is equal to what? Well, the, the book value. All right, what's the book value of the old? How much is it? Well, it's uh, 46,000. Is it 46? All right, mm -hmm. we got it right here. All right, now what's the gain we recognize? 9,000. 9,000, all right, and then all right, was there any boot paid? Yes or no? Mm. Cash, yeah, boot yes, paid. 13,000. 13,000, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now, are we gonna recognize any gain here? All right, well, no, no. why? Because, of the because it lacks substance. commercial substance. It lacks commercial substance, all right? And if it lacks commercial substance, no gain is recognized. It's recognized. Whether you receive cash or pay cash. Does everyone see that? Yes. All right. Yes. So the base, the assets, new value is what? How much is it? How much is it? 46 plus 9 plus 13. How much is that? 68. 68. Good, 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 good. All right. Now let's go to page 2D19. 2D19. All right, and on the top, it shows you, all right, to calculate the basis of the asset received, all right? Now, I will show you how to get the basis of the asset received. Remember, it's the book value of the asset surrendered, all right, plus the gain recognized of what? Nine, is there any gain recognized here? Scenario two, any gain recognized? Mm, yes. Oh, no. We said, we said huh? no. There's no gain recognized because it lacks commercial substance, right? Okay, yes, yes. yes. All right. So, therefore, we'll take the 9,000 out of this computation. No gain is recognized because it lacks commercial substance. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. And is there any boot paid here? 13,000. 13,000. All right. So, therefore, the basis of the new asset is 46 plus 13 or what? 59,000. 59,000. All right, now, you have to know how to do the journal entry. All right, so let's do the journal entry here. All right, it says here, debit asset received. How much is it? 59,000. 59,000. All right, how much is the accumulated depreciation of the asset given up? 26,000. 26, that's on the, the other page, right? Mm -hmm. All right, credit the asset given up. 
costs 72,000 mm -hmm. and we credit cash for 13. Now people say to me, all right, the gain is deferred. It's not recognized, right? All right, do you credit an account called deferred gain? No, all right? No. None of this gain really is what? Set up on the books. It's not deferred in a like-kind exchange, all right? If a lacks commercial substance, you don't record a deferred gain. The deferred gain is actually in the other assets, okay? So don't record a deferred gain. Do you see that? They don't record a deferred gain. All right, yes or no? No. But did no you what? say in a, you don't record the deferred gain? You say in a like-kind exchange? On a like-kind exchange, okay, all right? Being that none of this gain is recognized, right? All right, okay. you don't record any gain recognized, all right? So why don't you record it? Because the gain is what? Deferred. Deferred. Now, if you record deferred gain, that means what? In the future, the gain will be recognized, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Is the gain going to be recognized in the future? Yes. No, no. it's what? With, deferred. Well, won't it be recognized for, for tax purposes in the future? Is this no. taxes? Is this taxes? No. 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 Don't confuse taxes. Okay. All right. This gain is not recognized. All right. So if it's never going to be recognized, then it's what? Deferred. All of it. But you don't record a deferred gain because you record a deferred gain when that deferred gain will eventually be realized. All right. Okay. Is this deferred gain ever going to be realized? No. 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 So you don't record a deferred gain. All right. Does everyone see the journal entry? Yes? Yes. Yes. Okay, good. All right. I'm going a little slowly on this. All right. Now, let's go to scenario number, is, what's the next one? Number what? Five? Four. 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 All right. Let's do number four. All right. That's on page 2D. 19. 19. Let's go to 2D19. All right, and we have the following, all right? We have a non-monetary exchange, all right? We're doing four, right? It lacks commercial substance, and some cash is received, less than 25% of the total transaction. I'll explain to you that rule in a few seconds, all right? Actually, it'll be a few minutes, all right? Now, let's see what happens here. If it lacks commercial substance, and some cash is received, then what do you have to do? You have to calculate the gain, all right, and you recognize a portion of the gain, all right, based on the proration of the what? The cash received, the cash received. over mm -hmm. the cash received plus the fair market plus value of the, the asset of the cash received. The fair market value of the other assets received, okay? All right, now, let's see what we have here. First of all, they show you the formula here. If you receive some cash, all right, and it lacks commercial substance, all right, then some of the cash is gonna have a gain based on the cash in relation to the cash plus the other assets received. All right, now here's the information on the asset given up. All right, historical cost, accumulated depreciation, fair value of the asset given up. All right, information on the assets received, the fair value of the asset received is 180. The cash paid or received is 20, all right? And now we have to do the first step. What's the first step in a uh, non-monetary exchange? Calculate the gain. Calculate the gain, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, how do you calculate the gain? What do you take? Um, the fair value minus the carrying value? Yeah. it's a, You're selling it, aren't you? You're selling right. it at what? Fair market mm -hmm. value, right? Mm -hmm. right? So you're selling the fair market value of what? The asset given up. Mm -hmm. All right, and you're comparing that to the what? The book value of the asset mm -hmm. given up. You see that? Yes. All right, you sell an asset, it's at fair market value. Your basis when you give it up is always the book value of the asset. All right, so what's the total gain realized? How much? 50,000. 50,000. Now we're gonna see, we're not gonna recognize all of that. All right, now, mm -hmm. if you go to the next page, all right, it shows you what happens. Now, did they receive any cash? Yes. All right. So they received cash plus the fair market value of other assets, right? 
What is the assets they received? Cash plus the fair market value of the other assets received, mm -hmm. 180. All right, mm -hmm. so let's look at this formula to determine how much of the $50,000 realized gain is recognized, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, now, here's the formula. The numerator is the what? Mm -hmm. Does this yeah. lack, Isn't this it lack? the cash received? Cash, cash received. Cash, cash received cash re is how much? It's twenty thousand. Twenty thousand. That's the boot received, right? Mm -hmm. You divide that by the cash received of twenty thousand. All right. Plus, okay. what's the fair market value of the other assets received? One eighty. One eighty. One eighty. You see that? All right. So, if we take the twenty thousand. And divide it by two hundred thousand, all right, and we multiply that by the realized gain of fifty thousand. That will give us the amount of gain, which is what recognized, all right. So what is twenty over two hundred thousand? That's ten percent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, times fifty thousand is five thousand, all right. So therefore, the amount of the gain that's recognized is going to be what five thousand dollars. Everyone see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Now on page 2D20. All right. Let's look at 2D20, scenario number four. All right. The first thing is, all right, let's calculate the gain. All right. What's the gain on scenario number four? All right. We take the fair market value of the assets given up, right? Yes. All right. 200 yeah. minus mm -hmm. the book value of the asset given up is what? Um, what was the question? The question is, all right, the first thing you always do is calculate the... So it's 150, gain. right? All right, so it'd be it's 150. 150, right? Mm -hmm. That's the yes. fair market value asset given up? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. No, 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 no. That's the book value of the asset right. given up. So take the fair market value the asset given up, which is what? 200,000, 200. right? Yes. Minus the book value of the asset given up of what? 150,000. 150,000. So what is the realized gain here? 50,000. How much? 50,000. 50,000. 50, Do we agree with mm -hmm. that? All right. Now, the next thing we have to do is let's calculate the recognized gain. All right. Now, the recognized gain. Can I erase the board? Does everyone have this? Yes. Okay. All right, now, in this case, it lacks commercial substance, right? Mm -hmm. right? But they received some cash, right? So cash recognize a gain recognition. You understand that? All right. Mm -hmm. Cash is the best indicator of gain. All right, so this is what we do. All right, we're going to take, let's get our proration yes. here, the scenario number four, all right? We have the gain recognized is by taking the amount of the cash received. How much cash is received here? 20,000. 20,000. Mm -hmm. Over the cash plus the fair market value of the other assets. All right. How much is the cash? 20. What's the fair market value of the other assets? 180. 180. So we got 20,000, all right, Green over street. 180, right? I'm sorry, the 180 is the other assets, right? Right. So it's 20,000 over 180 plus, plus 20,000. 20, 20,000, which is 200,000. So what percentage of the cash received represents the gain recognized? 10%. 20 over 200, 10%. Now, we determined the gain recognized was how much? 50,000. 50,000, 50, all right? So if we multiply this by 50,000, how much of the gain is recognized? $5,000, all right? You see that? Mm -hmm. All right, now let's look at the journal entry for scenario four, all right? All right, we have the journal entry for scenario four. Yes, we do. All right, 
going to top page 2D20. All right, now we debit cash for how much? 20,000. 20,000, all right. We debit asset received. Well, that's a plug figure, but I'll show you how you get it. All right, we debit accumulated depreciation. How much is the accumulated depreciation of the asset given up? 100,000. 100, all right. We credit the cost of the asset given up, which is what? 250. 250. We said there was a gain of what here? 5,000 5, recognized. Now, right. you could easily get the asset value of the asset received by just plugging it in here, which is 135, right? Right. But you are CPA, kids, all right? And what I would do is this. I would calculate the basis of the new asset. Now, the basis of the new asset is calculated by taking what? The book value of the asset given up. All right. No, the fair value. The fair no, no, value. No, 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 no. It's isn't it the book value? It could be I, the one. Yeah, it's book value of asset given up. Why do Less we use the cash book value? Why do we okay, use book yeah, value of asset given up? Because all right, this is an exchange. We have the same thing we had before. So therefore, our basis before was the book value. So if we give it up, we're surrendering our book value of the asset given up. All right, okay. how much is the asset? Uh, what's the book value of the asset given up? 150,000. 450,000, right? Now, 150. 150. Yes. So I see 250. It's like an auction, okay? All right, so it's 150. Does everyone see 150? Yes. Yes. It's right there on the top, right? Yes. All right, now we're going to add, it doesn't make any difference which order. I'm going to add gain recognized. All right, how which much is 5, the gain 000. recognized? How much? $5,000. 5000 5, mm -hmm. All right, now, did receive any boot? Yes or no? We did. Yes. How much boot 20, did we 000. receive? All right, 20, boot received. Now, but we're boot, decreasing it. Is boot received a reduction or a plus to the book value? Reduction. 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 And that's reduction. how much? 20,000. 20, right? All right. Mm -hmm. Now, to get the asset value, all right, of the new asset received, it's 150 plus 5,000 minus 155. All right? It's 135. That's 135. Mm -hmm. And miraculously, there's the Equal answer. Equal plugging. Okay? Yeah. No, I, you know, it's interesting. Uh, the English language is probably the hardest language of any language to learn to someone who doesn't speak it. And I remember I was teaching a class and I had an Asian, a gentleman from China, all right? And he had like a uh, Chinese uh, dictionary, you know, where he could take the word plug and convert it into Chinese, all right? So I said in the class that the asset received is a plug figure, all right? He came over to me the next class, opened his book, and he showed me a plug that goes into a wall socket, <laughs> all right? So that's the thing with the English language. One word can mean more than one item, all right? All right, by the way, why I told you that story, I don't know, all right? I must have been on another drug. Don't worry <laughs> about that story, okay? All right, now, there's one other rule here, all right? Remember, you do recognize the gain based on the formula of the cash received uh, over the cash received plus the fair market value of the asset received, all right? But let's see what it says here. Go to scenario number four, please. All right, let's go to number four. Now, if you remember this, all right, we said we recognize $5,000, right? Now, you will recognize this $5,000 if the cash received is less than 25% of all the assets received. Cash plus the other assets, all right? Now, let's see what we have here in this question. The cash received is what, 20,000? Yes. Right? All right. Now, how much is the other asset to receive? All right. It is cash of 20. Mm -hmm. plus and asset itself. All right. Fair market value of other assets received is how much? 
180. 180. 180. All right. So if we take 20,000 over 200, what percentage is that? 10%. 10%. So as long as the cash received, all right, is not greater than 25% of the cash in excess of the total cash plus the fair market value of the other property, all right, you do recognize the gain based on the proration. All right, you understand that? Anybody? Can you repeat that? Can you repeat that, please? Yes. When you have a transaction, all right, where you receive cash, it lacks commercial substance, all right, you have to determine if any of the gain that's realized is recognized. All right. Now, in this example here, scenario four, we have a non-monetary exchange which lacks commercial substance and some cash is received. All right. Now, if some cash is received, you now have to do a proration of the amount of the realized gain that is recognized. All right. You with me? All right. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look at the example right under scenario four there. All right. We said the gain was what? Calculate the gain. 250, right? All right. Yes. Minus the book value of the asset given up, which is what? 150. Okay. See that? Mm -hmm. All right. So therefore, the gain realized is how much? The gain realized is 50,000. 50,000. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the gain, all right. Now, the cash received has to be less than 25% of the total of all assets received. All right, how much is the cash received? 20,000. All right, so the cash received is 20,000. Mm -hmm. All right, now, they're receiving cash of 20,000, right? Mm -hmm. All right, and what else are they receiving? The asset itself. Oh, the asset. Mm -hmm. Fair market value of the asset received. Mm -hmm. You see that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, yes. there's a formula right above there. You see the formula? Gain recognized is the cash received over the cash paid or cash received plus the fair market value of the asset received. All right. So we have here, all right, 20,000, all right, plus 20,000 is what? 40,000? Yes or no? I said that yeah. wrong. The cash received is how much? 20,000. 20,000. So we take the proration, 20,000, all right, over 20,000 plus the fair market value of the asset received, which is what? 180. So what percentage is the cash of 20,000 of the total assets received of 200,000? 10%. 10%. Now, is the cash less than 25% of the total assets received? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. Yes then all the gain that we're going to calculate is all what? Recognize. All right. We calculated gain here of how much? How much was the gain? 50,000. 50,000, right? Yes. All right. But all right, we're only picking up how much in our journal entry? 5,000. Is it 5,000? OK. Yes. All right. Now, let's see what happened if the cash received was greater then 25% of the cash plus the fair market value of the assets received, all right? Now, let's go to scenario number five, all right? Scenario number five. Now, this is on page 2D20 on the top, okay? Actually, uh, let's look at 2D20. Is that where it is, Sonny? Scenario five? That's where we're at. All right. That's where it begins. All right, scenario five, okay? Page 2D20. Now let's read this. We have a transaction that lacks commercial substance and boot is received. Okay, you see that? Now, when boot is received and it lacks commercial substance, you have to calculate the gain by taking the excess of the fair market value of the asset given up over the book value of the asset given up. All right, that's the gain. And when you receive some cash, remember, a, a portion of that realized gain is recognized. And what's the ratio to determine how much of the realized gain is recognized? All right. First of all, if it lacks commercial substance and boot is received, 
Okay. All right. We have to calculate a gain. Some potential recognized gain. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. All right. So we have to calculate what the gain is first, right? All right. To right. calculate what the gain is, you take the excess of the fair market value of the asset given up minus the book value of the asset given up. All right. That's your total realized gain. Now the recognized gain is calculated by taking the realized gain and multiply it by a proration of the numerator is the what? Cash received divided by the denominator, the cash received plus the fair market value of the other property received. All right, whatever that percentage is, you multiply that by the realized gain and that's the gain that is what? Recognized. Okay. All right. We're going to do some questions on this, okay? All right, so scenario five says, we have a non-monetary exchange that lacks commercial substance and boot received is now greater than 25%, all right? Now, remember, to really recognize the gain, all right, what happens? When you take your proration times the what? The realized gain, that's the amount of gain that is recognized, all right? As long as the cash is less than 25% of the total assets received. Now let's look at what it says here. We have a non-monetary exchange. It lacks commercial substance, but boot is received. The minute boot is received and a lack of commercial substance, we're gonna recognize some of that gain because we received boot. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. But right. the boot we received is now greater than 25% of the transaction. All right, now let's look at this example here. ABC trades a piece of equipment with XYZ and the asset given up has an historical cost of 250 and a fair market value of 140. The carrying value of the asset given up is 120. The piece of equipment received by ABC has a fair market value of 80 and XYZ also receives $60,000. The entity does not expect the cash flows to be significantly changed as a result of the transaction. When they tell you that, that the entity does not expect the cash flows to significantly change, all right, what do we know? All right, does it have commercial substance or not? No. No, no, no it doesn't. Remember, it only has commercial substance if they expect the cash flows to be significantly changed or increased, hopefully, all right, due to the exchange. Well, it doesn't seem to expect the cash flows to be significantly changed, so this lacks commercial substance, okay? All right, now, let's go down, not to the journal entry, let's go down to the next paragraph that says, the transaction lacks commercial substance since the company doesn't expect the cash flows to change significantly. The general rule is that ABC will recognize a pro rata amount of the gain realized, right? All right, if the cash received is less than 25%, of the total consideration received, the boot plus the fair market value asset received. If it is more than 25%, the cash of the total consideration received, the transaction is considered a monetary transaction and, and all the gain, gain is recognized. Okay. A monetary transaction means it's selling the item for what? Cash, because cash is the majority of what they're gonna receive. You see that? Right. right? All right, now let's look at the calculation here. First of all, the gain is calculated as such. How do you calculate the gain? Fair value of the asset given up. Right, which is how minus much? Minus the book value of the asset, 140. 140 minus the book value, which is how much? 120. 120. So notice, all right, the gain, the realized gain is 20,000. Does everyone see that? Mm -hmm. All yes. right, now, let's look at the next test, all right? We're going to figure out how much of that transaction is the percentage of the cash to the total of assets received. All right, now, the cash received or the boot received is what? 60,000. 60,000. Mm -hmm. How much is the total boot plus the fair market value of the other assets received? Mm -hmm. The cash is 60, right? That's the numerator. The mm -hmm. denominator is the cash of 60 plus mm -hmm. the fair market value of the other assets received. What's the fair, 
What's the fair market value of the other assets received? 140. 140, all right? Mm -hmm. So when we take the proration, mm -hmm. all right? Is that what it says, 140? Mm -hmm. right. Well, when you uh, add the fair market value of the asset and the cash received. All right, when you add the, all right, what's the fair market value of the non-cash assets? What are they? 80,000. All right, and that's the piece of equipment. Do you see that? Right, right. All right. So the cash of 60 plus the cash, divided by the cash plus the fair market value of the other asset received, which is 80, all right? Mm -hmm. And we do the proration, we find that the cash of 60,000 is 43% of all the assets received, all right? Mm -hmm. Now, since the $60,000 cash boot is greater than 25% of the exchange, the entire the gain, gain is it. recognized. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. all right. Now, let's look at 2D21. No, 2D20, stay on 2D20. Let's look at the journal entry here, all right? Here's the journal entry to record the exchange. All right, how much cash are they receiving? 60K. 60,000. 60,000? Yes. Yes. Um, well, wait a minute. If we go up here, all right, it says here, if you go above the journal entry, can you move that down a little? Thank you. All right, what's the cash received? 60,000. Where do you get that? In the um, text, also gives cash of sixty thousand dollars. Actually, that's the journal entry for scenario four, right? Let's go to scenario five. No, scenario five. Two D scenario five. Yes. yes. No, 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 no. All right, that is two, that was scenario four. All right, let's look at scenario five. Okay. Five. Yes, non-monetary exchange right. lacks commercial substance, and boot received is greater than twenty-five thousand dollars right. a transaction. So you are Scenario absolutely five. right. We debit the cash for sixty thousand. I was looking at the wrong one. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, how much is the accumulated depreciation of the asset given up? One hundred thirty. One hundred thirty. One hundred and thirty. All right. Mm -hmm. Now we credit the equipment given up, which is how much? Eighty thousand. No, no, no. That's no. what we received. 120? Uh, 20, Look 120? at the information they give it to you. It's 120? Asset, no, the asset given up is 250. You see that? Oh, yes, yes. All right, does everyone see yes. that? Yes, mm -hmm. the asset right. is 250. All right. Accumulated depreciation is 130, okay. And the amount of accumulated depreciation is 130. All right. So the book value and, is 120. All right, it is 120. What? Yes. Okay. The, book the carrying value of the asset given up is 120. All right. So the cash received is 60,000, right? Yes. All right. It says that in scenario number five. You see what it says that? Yes. Yes. Right. Now we debit accumulated depreciation, which is 130, right? Right. That's the yes. 250 minus the 120 of carrying value. All right. Then we credit equipment given up for how much? 80, What's the cost? No, oh, no, no. I'm sorry, 250,000. 250,000, right? Yes. All right. Mm -hmm. Now, yes. they're saying that because the boot received is greater than 25%, the entire gain is recognized. All right. Yes. So, when you lack commercial substance and boot received is greater than 25% of the total assets received in the transaction, all right? All don't gain do is the recognized. proration. Don't do the proration, just calculate the gain because all the gain is recognized, all right? Yes. All right, and let's get the value of the new asset, all right? All right, how do you get the value of the new asset in scenario five? All right, any questions on that before I go to how you get the basis of the new asset? No. All right, you'll see the questions are different the way they're laid out. I mean, it, they're not different, but you'll see, all right, you're now reading this huge amount of information, all right? I shouldn't say that. They could give you something like this. All right, so let's get the new asset value. We take the book value of the asset, which is 120. All right, book value of asset given up, which Add is the game. 120. 120. Yes. All right. Now we had the gain of how much? 20,000. 20,000. 
And is there any boot received or paid? Yes. What is there? He got sixty thousand dollars. Sixty thousand. Sixty thousand of boot received, right? When yes. boot is re when boot is received of sixty thousand, does it reduce your basis of your new asset, or does yes. it increase it? Yes. Reduce. 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 So we subtract sixty thousand. So let's get the book value of the new asset, one twenty. All right, plus the boot given up, right? I'm sorry, twenty thousand is the what? Gain recognized. Mm -hmm. I almost screwed that up. Let me repeat that. The book value of the old asset is 120. The gain recognized is what? 90,000. Uh, I'm sorry, 20,000. 20,000. Does everyone see where you get that number? Yes. Yes. Why is it 20,000? Because the cash received Steve, is, 43%. is greater than 25% of the total assets received. The cash plus the fair market value. All right. And then the yeah. boot received, we subtract, right? All right. So Correct. what's the base, what's the book value of the new asset? 140 minus 60 is what? Eight. One. Isn't it 120 minus 60? 140 minus. Yes. Oh, sorry. Yes. 80,000. Yes. 80,000. All right. Mm -hmm. It's 80,000. Yeah. How do you get the 80? It's 120 plus the gain of 140, right? Gains increased basis. It's a stepped up basis for gain. And we subtract the boot received of 60. 120 yeah. plus 20 minus 60 is what? 80,000, all right? Does yes. that agree with? All right, let's look at the journal entry here. Does that agree? Yes or no? Mm -hmm. Yes. Does. All right. Yes. All right, new asset is? The, 80, the journal entry is on the middle of page 2D20, okay? All right, so let's recap here, all right? Now we'll look at some questions here, all right? First of all, what's the first thing you do in a non-monetary exchange, whether a lax commercial substance or not? What do you do? Calculate the gain. Calculate the gain, right? All right, yes. well, how do you calculate the gain? Fair market value of the asset value given up the, minus the book minus value of the, the asset. Value. Right. You take the fair market value of the asset given up, right? Okay. Minus the book value of the asset given up. Now, if the fair market greater is great, the fair market value is greater than the book value of the asset surrendered, all right, you're gonna have a what? A what? A gain. A, gain. a realized gain. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, what's the second step? Well, all right, you look to see if it has commercial substance, right? All right, yes. if you have, if the transaction has commercial substance and there's a gain, what do you do with the gain? Recognize the gain. Recognize all the gain immediately, right? Mm -hmm. All right, now, if there's a loss, what do you do? You always record the loss. The loss. No, always you reduce it from the base. the entire loss, right? Yes. Is that true? All right. Yes. Now, if there's a gain calculated in step one, all right, let's assume it has commercial substance. I said you recognize the entire gain, right? Mm -hmm. If there's a loss, you recognize the entire loss. Now, if it lacks commercial substance, all right, if no cash is involved, received or paid, all right, no gain is recognized. Has everyone got that? Mm hmm Yes. All right. But you will recognize what? Loss. Yes. All right. Now, if there's some cash received, all right, then what do you do? All right. If it lacks commercial substance and some cash is received, all right, what do you do? You do a proration. Calculate right? the gain and prorate. All right. Mm -hmm. What's the proration? It would be the cash. Divided by the cash received plus the fair market value of the assets received time. And you, and you multiply that by the total the realized gain, right? Right. Which is calculated mm -hmm. in step one. All right. Now, when you take the total realized gain times the cash received, all right, over the cash received plus the fair market value of the other assets, then what do we know? That's the amount of the gain that is recognized, right? Mm -hmm. Now, remember. 
That gain is only recognized if the cash you receive is under 25% 25%. of the cash plus the fair market value of the property, right? Mm -hmm. But what happens if the cash received is more than 25% of the total cash and fair market value of the property? What do you do with the All gain is recognized. All All the gain gain is is recognized. That's all you have to know. Mm-hmm. All right. Any questions on that? No, no question. Robin, no question. you have a question? You have a question? No, no, no. All right. Let's look at some multiple choice here, or as I call them, multiple guests. All right. Let me go to the questions in the back. Bear with me a second. All right. And I made some notes here. Let me get the questions here. All right, we're gonna go to question, all right, 86, 86, okay? Let's go to question 86 in the back. Um, What page is that on? 2-13. Sorry? 2-13. I think, is that what what number was it? MCQ, MCQ. Go to the MCQs. Mm-hmm. All right. And then you go to two dash. All right. It is two. Let me get it. It's number number 86, right? So it's two dash. 86 or okay. What did I say? Did I say 86? You said 86. I thought we were starting on 69. I'm sorry. Let's start on uh well Sonny wanted me to do start on 69. All right. 69 is on MCQ 2 13. Correct. Okay, all right, okay. all right. Let me get that question. MCQ two dash thirteen. All right. Now, before we did this, all right. How many people did understand? All right, uh, non-monetary exchanges. All right. All right. Did you did you all understand non-monetary exchanges before? Yes or no? Slightly. Yes. yes, sort of. Uh, yes. Now, did this help you? Yes. Yes. Okay. Because if you said it didn't, I was going to hang up on you. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, I'm a sensitive guy. Sensitive guy. Okay. All right. Let me just get the question in the back. And while we're doing that, just mingle amongst yourselves. All right. Let me see here. Oh, one second, one second. All right, we got question 69, all right? Are you ready? Are you mm-hmm. all ready? All right. On December 30th, 20X5, Diamond traded in an old machine with a book value of 10 for a similar machine having a list, list price of 32 and paid a cash difference of 19,000. The transaction lacks commercial substance, all right? Diamond should record the new machine as what? All right. Well, first of all, let's calculate the gain. Do you see that? All right. On 69. All right. First of all, the gain is calculated as such. How is it? Uh, 32,000 minus uh, 29,000. All right. We have here. All right. We have the, we got my numbers here. 32,000 mm-hmm. is the what? Fair market value of the asset surrendered. What's mm-hmm. the book value? Twenty nine thousand. Book value is twenty nine thousand. Mm-hmm. You don't want to agree with that? Book value says here, isn't it uh, nine ten thousand? Ten thousand. Ten thousand, right? right. Ten thousand, right? So the gain that is realized is how much? Twenty two thousand. Twenty two thousand. Right. All right. Now, all right. Do we have to do a proration here? Mm. All right, first of all, the transaction lacks commercial lacks substance. Commercial substance. All right, what do we have to do here? All right, this is what we have to do. All right, we're going to get you the prorate. Prorate it. You have to prorate it? Okay. All right, yeah. now let's do the proration. All right, now what we do here is this. All right, to do the proration, we take the cash. All right, did he receive cash here? Yes, 19,000. 19,000, right? You received 19,000. All right. And the total assets that Diamond received was what? 
32. 32,000. All right. It's what? It's 32. Did you receive any cash? 19. 19. 19. All right. Let me see. Uh, okay. So therefore, all right, 19 over what? I want to check the answer here. I want to make sure. I think it's. Oh, 19 over 51. Is what? All right. This is probably why I didn't want to do 69 first, but I told Sonny. All right. It's 37%. It's 37%. Okay. All right. Now, it says here in 69, all right, it says that this transaction lacks commercial substance. In this situation, all right, the book value used for accounting entries. When monetary consideration is also paid and the transaction lacks commercial substance, the party paying the monetary consideration will record as the cost of the new asset, all right, the book value of the asset surrendered plus the amount of the monetary consideration paid, right? All right, now, in this case, all right, they don't want the gain, do they? That's not what they're asking. They're asking for the value of the what? New machine. Right? Yes. Yeah. Right. Now, yes. how do you get the value of the new machine? All right. First of all, we take the book value of the asset given up, right? Yes. All right. And we have, we paid cash here, right? You see mm -hmm. that they paid cash. So if they paid cash, there is no gain or loss. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. All right. On my chart, what does my chart say? All right. If a transaction, Black commercial substance, all right, and some cash is paid or received, then it ups the basis no gain of the is asset. recognized, right? Is that what I said? Yes or no? Black yes. commercial substance. Black no commercial gain. substance, and some cash is paid, all right, there is no gain, no gain received. All right, you see that? Mm hmm. Did Diamond, all right, Pay cash, yes or no? It did. It yes. Did. All right. So mm -hmm. Diamond's transaction lacks commercial substance. Do you agree? And yeah. it says in that chart I gave you that the transaction lacks commercial substance. All right. And cash is paid. No gain is recognized. All right. Do you see that? Yes. Does everyone see that table I gave you? Yes or no? Yes. All right. Now. So there's no gain recognized. So what is the cost or the fair book value of the new asset? All right. It's going to be, I think we discussed this. What is 29,000? 29,000? Well, all right. It is 10,000, right? Oh, yes. All right. Plus. Plus right, the boot there's paid. There's no gain recognized, right? Yes. All right. Plus uh, boot paid of 19. All right. Mm -hmm. So what's the answer? 29. 29,000 letter B. And if you look in the solution, it gives you the journal entry for the transaction. All right, let's say this again, all right? First of all, this thing lacked commercial substance. They have to tell you if it lacks commercial substance or it has commercial substance. But they can also say, all right, if it's not generating any increased cash flows, then does it lack or not lack? Lack. lack. It lacks, all right? So now you look at the thing. If it lacks commercial substance and cash is paid, all right, what happens? Is any gain recognized? No gain. No gain recognized, okay? All right, so therefore, the new book value of the asset received is what? It's the old book value, which is how much here? 10,000. 10,000 10, 10, plus, plus the new boot cash paid. paid, right? Of 19, what do we do with boot paid? We plus it. We add, add we it. We add it, right? So therefore, yeah. 10,000 plus 19 is 29,000. Okay? You see that now? Yes. Yep. All right. Let's go to number 70. I have to admit, though, that I did not realize that um, we would have to incorporate knowing that if it lacks commercial substance and boot was paid, then no gain is recognized. So that would have thrown me if I hadn't been on this uh, You know webinar. why there's no, there's no gain recognized? 
because generally you recognize gain, all right? Even though it lacks commercial substance, you recognize mm -hmm. gain when you get cash. Cash is the best indicator okay, got you. of gain, right? You see that? You. <laughs> yes. That's why if it lacks commercial substance and you get cash, all right, plus other property, all right, you're going to say, I'm going to calculate my realized gain, which is the excess of the fair market value of the asset given up minus the book value of the asset given up. All right, that's the realized gain. But even though it lacks commercial substance, all right, if I receive some cash, the amount of the cash divided by the total you receive, the cash and the non-cash, all right, that's the percentage of the what? The gain recognized. The gain the recognized. Program. The realized gain recognized. When you yeah. take the fair market value of the asset given up, one is the book value of the asset given up, that's the realized gain. Okay. Right? Mm -hmm. Everyone see that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, let's go to number 70. All right, it says, number 70, Sonny, MCQ 2-13. All right, by the way, a lot of people say, Phil, what do you do when you're studying? All right, well, first of all, I still have to study. Do you know that? All right, because when I come in here, I want to be as sharp as a tack, okay? All right, so I drink Propel, okay? This is the drink <laughs> of choice, okay? I drink Propel because it has a lot of electrolytes, all right? Which I have no idea what an electrolyte is, all right? <laughs> but the fact that it says electrolyte means that it will take you and you'll be like a rocket taking off, all right? And also, it has no calories, no calories. And before every class, when I do live courses, I used to say, this class is brought to you by Propel, all right? So someone came to me at the end of the class, the last class of the live classes, and they said, all right, have you gotten a deal with Propel? So I said, no, all right? You think I should call them? And he says, yeah, maybe I'll send you free Propel, all right? Well, I got on the phone. Now, I think at that time, Propel was owned by Coca-Cola, all right? I actually got the phone number of Coca-Cola, all right? And I said to them, I mentioned Propel in all my classes, all right? I think I should get free Propel from you, all right? And they said, here it goes, put it in a letter and we'll pass it up to the right people. Did we get that? All right? I didn't get it. Very good. <laughs> but I still drink it. I'm, I'm loyal to it, all right? And by the way, once again, that has nothing to do with the exam. All right, here we go. October 10, 20X5, Gerard exchanged 2,000 shares of its $50 par value common stock held in treasury for a patent owned by Waxman Company. The treasury shares were acquired in 20X4 at a cost of 80. At the exchange date, Gerard's common stock was quoted at 55 per share, and the patent has a carrying value on Waxman's books of 90,000. The transaction does not lack commercial substance, all right? So if it doesn't lack commercial substance, then it what? Does it have commercial substance? Yes or no? Yes. It does. No. It does. Yeah, it does. Right? See the way they ask that? It does not lack, mm -hmm. right? Okay? So it has commercial substance, mm -hmm. all right? Gerard should record the patent at what amount? All right, now, they're actually exchanging stock, right? Gerard has 2,000 shares of stock, all right, in its treasury, all right? So they're exchanging the 2,000 shares of stock for a what? A patent. Is that true? All right. Now, what's the first thing you have to calculate? The gain. The gain. All right. What is the fair market value of the asset we're giving up? What are we giving up? All right, Gerard exchanged 2,000 shares. All right, they're giving up 2,000 shares of stock, right? All right, mm -hmm. now, what is the fair market value of those 2,000 shares? 100,000. No. At the exchange date, Gerard's common stock was quoted at 55 dollars a share. All right, okay. 11,000. So the fair market value per share is 55 times 2,000, 
All right. Now that's one hundred and ten thousand, right? Okay. All right. Now, what's the book value of the asset given up? One hundred thousand. No. No. Eighty thousand. Eighty. Eighty thousand. Do you see that? The treasury shares were acquired in twenty X four at a okay. cost of eighty thousand. Okay. All right? Now, to calculate the book value here, you're not going to subtract any depreciation. You agree? Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. Why don't you subtract depreciation? Stock. There's no depreciation. You don't depreciate stock. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So the fair market value of the asset given up is 110. The book value is 80, right? Mm -hmm. All right. What is the realized gain? 30,000. 30, 30,000, 30, right? Mm -hmm. Now let's look at the transaction here. All right. This transaction has commercial substance. Mm -hmm. Balance of that thirty thousand. Are we going to recognize all of it? All of it. All of it. Hey, if it's increasing our cash flows, mm -hmm. then the gain is you know really all going to be recognized. You see that? Because mm -hmm. our cash flows are going up, that's a gain. So recognize all the gain on the transaction. All right. Now let's get the value of the new asset. All right. How do you get the value of the new asset? You take the what? The fair market value. You take the what? And the fair market value. Uh, excuse fair me, market the book value, value of the asset surrendered, right? How much is that? That was, uh, what did we say? 110. 110. That's a 2,000 shares at $55 per share. That's 110,000, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, we subtract from that the what? The book value. The book of the value. Shares, right? How much is the book mm -hmm. value of the shares? 80,000. 80,000. The book value of the shares surrendered is 80,000. So if the fair market value is 110 and the book value is 80, what's the gain? 30,000. All right. Now, let's calculate the value of the new asset. You got that? The patent? All right. Now, mm -hmm. to get the new value of the patent, we take the old basis of the patent. All right, that would be what? All right, how much is the old 80. basis of it? How much is it? 80. It's 80, okay. All right, we take 80, and then what are we gonna add? The gain? Plus 30. All right, the gain is 30. 130, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else we had to subtract? Any boot received? No. No. Any boot paid? No. All right. So therefore, our new value is the eighty plus the thirty, or what? One hundred and ten thousand. Okay. How many people got that? Did you get it? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Hey, you know something? All right, if they ask this, they're gonna ask you to calculate exactly here. What's the value of the new asset? All right, what's the recognized gain? All right, well, the realized gain is always the fair market value over the basis, right? The recognized is how much of that gain is actually recorded as gain on the books, okay? All right, here we go. I got another one for you. You ready for another one? All right, let's look at, let me see here. Uh, let's go to question number. Did we do 86? Did we do 86, Sonny? No, we did not yet. All right, let's do 86, okay? Let's go to 86. And 86 appears on, I think it's MCQ. 2-15. 2-15, okay? All right, now, all right, this is very exciting. It's 86, all right? Now, we're going to analyze the transaction. So we're going to determine whether it has commercial substance or not, right? And then we're going to calculate, first of all, the gain or loss, okay? Actually, take that back. Calculate the gain or loss first, okay? Now let's read this. A company exchanged land with an appraised value of 50000 and an original cost of twenty. all right? The machinery has a fair value of 55000 Assuming the transaction has commercial substance, if it has commercial substance, what do we know about the gain? Let's recognize it. It's recognize. all recognized, right? 
Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. Now, let's get the game. All right. How do you get the game? You take the what? Fair value. Uh, book value. Fair, value. Fair, value. fair value. The asset given up. What's the fair value of the asset given up? It's 50,000. 50,000. He's giving up land that has an appraised value of 50,000. All right. Mm-hmm. Now, the new asset he's giving, the new asset he's getting has a fair value of 55. You see that? Mm-hmm. Yes, market. it is. Right. So don't use the 55. Use the fair market value of the asset given up and compare that to the book value of the asset given up. What's the book value of the asset given up? 20,000. 50,000? 20, 20. 20,000. All right. That's correct. Fair market value of the asset given up is 50. All right. The book value of the asset given up is its original cost. All right. You see that? Now, they didn't take depreciation. You see that? So the 20,000 is the book value. All right. That will give you a gain. All right. Of how much? 35,000. 35,000? 30, 30. 30. All right. All right. So what's the answer? C as in Charles. Okay, wait a minute. I'm confused. The no problem. machine that we are acquiring is fifty-five thousand. Right? Uh, that's correct. The book, the land value is twenty thousand. We're so giving up. Is, we're giving up land. All right. Of twenty thousand dollars. We're giving up land that has an appraised value of fifty and an original cost of twenty. All right. That's the what? The values of the asset given up. You see that? The fifty-five, the fifty thousand is the fair market value of the asset given up. All right. The book value of the asset given up is twenty thousand. All right. Yeah. Right. But the machinery that we're taking is fifty-five. So isn't. But it we're not. But we don't that? calculate the gain based on the machinery. We, we calculate the gain based on what we what we're giving up. We're not right. giving up the machine. We're giving up That's the land. That's correct. We're well, we are acquiring a new machine. machine. We're receiving a new machine. Right, but we're mm-hmm. calculating the we're calculating the gain mm-hmm. on what we gave up, which is the land, not the machine. You see that? We don't use the fifty-five because that's the what? The fair market value of the asset received. Received, you right? You, all right. So to get the gain, it's the old book value of what? Of what we already have. Of what we gave up. Gave up, right? Yes. Which is twenty thousand. Right. right? Plus the gain of how much? No, plus the fair value of what we gave up. So the gain is calculated based on what you gave up. The fair value of what you gave up and the book value of what you gave up, that's how you get your gain. You don't use the what you're receiving that's to correct. get your gain. Right. So to get the gain, okay. we'll take the fair market value of the asset given up, which is how much? 50000 mm-hmm. All right. Compared to the book value of the asset given up, which is what? Twenty. Okay. All right. Okay. So we have a gain here of thirty thousand. Now that thirty thousand gain is the realized gain, and because the transaction has commercial substance, that is also the recognized gain. You see that? Got it. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Let's try one more. Right. We would only use the fair value of the item received if we had to do the proration, but we don't. No, we do the proration only when. When the transaction lacks commercial, lacks substance, commercial substance and, and we, have we receive cash, cash. Right. and property, other property. Right. All right. And remember, if the cash is more than 25% of the total value of the cash and property, then we the recognize all of the gains. Is all recognized. Mm-hmm. If it doesn't exceed 25%, then you do the proration. The prorata. Mm-hmm. Right. Which is the cash over, all right, the fair market value of the asset received, plus the cash received, times the what? The realized gain. That's the recognized gain. Any questions? No. All right. I want to ask you this, all right? Is anybody taking the exam next week? No. All right, good. Because, all right, I wanted to do this the right way and go over it, all right? And it took the whole time, okay? The 10 to quarter, we'll do one more multiple choice, all right? What I'm gonna do is this. Next Sunday, all right, uh, is Sunny? The 17th. 
I know. Well, what's the times next Sunday? Uh, 12 o'clock. 12 o'clock is for auditing, right? No. 12 o'clock was what our time slot would be for FAR. All right. We're going to do FAR next Sunday at 12 o'clock. All right? It's a continuation of this class. Yeah. It'll be, we're going to do the statement of cash flow. All right? Because it's a popular topic. And people have trouble. How many people, how many of you had trouble with statement of cash flow? I do. I did. <laughs> you did or I do? <laughs> I do. I do. Okay. I feel like I'm proposing to you. Proposing. All right. Now. <laughs> All right. And I hate to be direct on that. Get that cute? All right. Now, direct is a method of cash flow. All right. But anyway, we're going to spend an hour. And we'll go over the statement of cash flow, okay? All right? And this is what I want you to do, all right? I want you to do the following multiple choice questions, all right, that deal with uh, commercial substance, non-commercial, and non-monetary exchanges, okay? All right, mm -hmm. here are the questions. First of all, all right, 69, we did that, didn't we? Mm -hmm. All right, we 70, 70. We did 70. All right, but do it again. We did 72, uh, 72. Uh -huh. All right, all right, 73. And I want you to do, all right, uh, 76. All right, 78. 81. All right, 86. All right, and then there is the following, okay? All right, 97. All right, do 98. And that is it, I think. Let me see. Oh, no, there's more. Okay, all right. Uh, all right, 109 is another non-monetary exchange. And 110 is another one. That might be the last one. No, there is. There's another one here. All right. 117. And the last one, I promise you, is 118. Okay? All right. Now, let's do one more of these. Okay. Are there any simulations on this topic? Uh, no, because I'll tell you why. The simulation, all right? If you look at the scenarios, skip scenario one. If you look at two, three, four, and five, all right, that's the type of problem they would give you to calculate all those things. All right, you understand? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. And all they do is they'll give you the fair market value, the book value. I don't think this would necessarily be a document simulation. I think this would be a simulation where they just ask, give you facts and you have to calculate it. Now, is everyone, is everyone aware the exam is all machine graded? Yes. It's all machine graded, which means that every one of these answers has to be graded by a machine. They could actually give you the results the next day if they wanted to, all right? But they make it sound like a person looks at this. Uh, uh, I don't believe that, all right? So it's all machine graded. So they have to give you questions which are machine graded. So they might give you a question like calculate the realized gain, all right, for commercial substance, lax commercial substance, all right, et cetera, et cetera. But, all right, they may give you eight items they want you to calculate, okay? Now, you have to get all eight to pass that problem. No, if you get about 65% of the questions right, all right, so if you had, all right, let's, let's say you had 10 responses they're looking for, all right? 10 responses, all right, times 65% of those, you have to get approximately six to seven right, all right? And that will give you a full score. That's what they might decide, all right? If you get six or seven of the 10 right, all right, you'll get full credit, even though you haven't done the other ones. And when you're going through the responses, you know, which question, all right? Start with number one, all right? If you can't do it, 
Then move on to number two, all right? If you can't get that, move on to number three response. You want to get as many of those responses correct, all right? And that will determine, all right, if you pass that subject. Because every simulation is a different subject. And they're trying to determine, do you understand that subject? And they realize you don't have enough time to get everyone right, okay? All right? You're not going to have enough time. But make sure you don't do all of one simulation and not get to another simulation at all. Because if you don't get to that other simulation, they don't have a clue whether you understood that topic or not. All right? Does that make sense? Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Now, all right, here, we're going to do one more here. All right. And we did. Did we do 72? No. 72? Let's do 72. All right. And 72 is on page MCQ 2-13. All right. Now, it says, you know what? I'm going to have you read this and do it yourself. And then we'll go over it together. OK? All right. Try 72. How many people are done? That's it. You have to know what information you need to get the response. All right, I'm going to go over because Ron is going to start pretty soon, all right? And by the way, I think Ron today is showing you a video. I'm not sure, okay? All right? Now, here we go. All right, first of all, they want to know, let's look at the question. What's the amount of gain or loss that Ewing should recognize? Well, we know you recognize loss whether it has commercial substance or not. Now, does this transaction have commercial substance or does not? It does. It does. So we know we're going to recognize the entire gain, right? Yes, mm -hmm. recognizing $10,000 of the gain is 10000 You recognize all of it. Correct. Now let's get the gain, all right? The fair market value of the asset given up is how much? 60000 No, the fair right. market value is 70000 Read the question. The, the fair market value, value is 70000 You see that? The market value of the mm -hmm. old packaging machine was 70000 all right? Right. That's a fair market value of the asset given up. All right, now let's get the book value of the asset given up. It's That's 60000 It was 120 cost, right? All right. I have to appreciate it. It's 50% depreciated. So what's the book value? 60000 All right, so we compare the 70000 to the book value of the asset remaining of sixty, which gives mm -hmm. us an answer of what? 10. 10000 Letter D is in dog. Questions? I think it's good if we have the last five minutes to go over just a couple of points. So like for this question, after you um, mentioned that we needed to go ahead and move forward, I realized we need to make sure we knew everything, all the points. I realized that just read the stem to see what they're looking for. And if they mentioned the fact that it has commercial substance and they're looking for the gain, then I know all the gains gonna be recognized. Forget everything else and just calculate the gain and answer the question. Yes. So I points would like the, that. Yeah, she I'm sorry, you want me to do what? Uh, so I'm saying can we can we oh. go over like quick quick little points like that? Yeah, well, exactly. What I would do is thank you very much. Um, first of all, see what they're asking for. They want the gain or loss 
that Ewing would recognize. Now, you have the amount of gain. First of all, loss is always recognized, right? Whether it has commercial substance or not. But gain is not, all right? Now, uh, does this transaction have commercial substance? Yes or no? It does. Yes. Then all the gain you calculate is recognized. You got that? All right. right. So you calculate the gain by taking the fair market value of the asset given up minus the book value of the asset given up. Okay? All right. So this is what I would do. What's the first thing you do always? Calculate the what? The gain. Gain. All right. How yes. do you calculate the gain, whether it has commercial substance or doesn't? When it does fair have value of the asset given up minus the book value of the asset given up. Now, what happens if you don't have the fair market value of the asset given up? What do you use? The fair market value of the new asset. The fair market value of the asset received. Mm -hmm. You see that? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Okay. All right. Now, you determine that. The next thing is, all right, you're going to look to see whether it has commercial substance or not. If it has commercial substance, all right, then it's increasing the cash flows. All the gain will be recognized. You see that? Mm -hmm. Now. Yes. If it lacks commercial substance and you're paying cash, all right, how much of the gain is recognized? None. Lack commercial no, substance. None. Pay none. cash. Okay. All right. But yes. if it lacks commercial substance and you receive cash, all right, what are you going to do? You receive cash and property. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's got to be cash and property, right? Yes. All right. So you prorate it. All right, what's the proration? The cash received divided by the cash received plus the fair value of the asset received and times the, 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 re the realized gain. Correct, and that gives you the recognized gain, right? Right. All right. Yes. Now, that amount of gain that is recognized from that formula, all right, is only the recognized gain when the cash you receive is less, is 25% or less of the total assets received. You got that? Right. Yes. right? They're not going to give you 25%. They'll let, you know, give you some. Right. If it's over 25%, the cash received in relation to the total assets received, then what do you do? All right. Recognize all the gain. Even if it lacks commercial substance, recognize all the gain. Okay. okay? Um, and then another point that we had um, that was new um, or that kind of stumped me was that if you're looking at stock, don't look for depreciation because it won't be there. No. If you if you're using land, if you're using land, don't look for depreciation there either because it appreciates. It doesn't depreciate. It doesn't so, depreciate. Yeah. So a couple of things went over today, kind of honed it in for me. So uh, going over those last minute points are helpful. Now I guess they could give you patents, and patents can be amortized for accounting, right? Yes. Right. Okay. But goodwill, can goodwill be amortized for accounting purposes? No. 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 All right. For accounting purposes, goodwill cannot be amortized because it has an indefinite life. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, all right. Well, anyway, go over those questions. All right. If you have a problem, all right, give me a call. All right. And here's my phone number once again. All right. It's area code 301, that's in Maryland, all right, 874-4900, extension 5.